Alrighty, so today for our math lesson, we are actually combining, again, two of our lessons. So you need 11, 11 uh, lesson 11 is what we're starting with, and then we're going to continue on um, to do part of lesson 12, because they're the same concepts and they're the same objectives. Okay, so um, we'll be working on comparing lengths by counting on. The vocabulary that we need, or actually let's start off with the objective. Our objective is today I will compare lengths of two objects by counting on using a number line. Okay. Um, the vocabulary words. Counting on means to count up from a number. So if you want to count on starting at the number one, you count on by moving forward. One, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. The next vocabulary word is compare. The definition of compare means to closely look at two or more ob objects to see what is similar or different. Okay, so if you want to say, I'm comparing these two markers, you can either say what is similar, what is alike, so they're both markers, correct? Or what what is a difference? Right, so one's green and one's red. Okay, that's just um, physical attributes, physical differences and similarities. There are, um, today when we're comparing our lengths, we will be comparing in numbers. Okay, you can either say that something is shorter than another, or you can say something is longer than another object, okay? Um, and then lastly, this is our number line. You guys are well familiar with our number line. We've been using them and you've been using them for a few years now. All right, so we use this as a math, math, uh, math tool to count on. Okay, all right, so our steps. Number one is to identify the two objects to compare. So we're gonna be given a sentence or um, a scenario where we need to figure out what we're comparing. Okay, they're gonna give us two objects and their lengths. Okay, so it's our job to read the whole thing and to figure out what the two objects are that we're comparing. Then, number two says to draw or use a number line to count on. It Notice it says draw or use. Sometimes you'll be given the number line, but sometimes you'll have to draw it on your own. Okay, but you know that it's a step, so if it doesn't have it there, then you need to draw, you need to draw one. Okay, number three says to compare the measurements. So whatever the measurements of the two objects are, you're going to compare them. Either say one is shorter than the other object or one is longer than the other object. And number four says to write comparison sentences that include units. Early on, you're probably going to be given the sentences, and then eventually you're going to need to write them on your own. So um, let's get started. All right. So I actually um, started recording this earlier, but my recording got messed up or got interrupted. So I'm al I've already written everything down, but I'll talk through it. All right. So number one says Samantha wants to, to, to compare the lengths of her two dolls. Doll one is 12 inches long and doll two is 18 inches long. So you notice that I underlined doll one and doll two. That's because number one in our steps say to identify the two objects. I went ahead and identified the two objects that we're comparing. Doll one is the first one and doll two is the second. Okay, then number two, step number two says to draw or use a number line to count on. Here's the number line, it was already provided. However, remember if they don't give you one, you need to draw it in for yourself. Okay, um, and then number three says to compare the measurements. So going back into the statement or the sent sentence, it says that doll one is 12 inches long. That's what we know about doll one, it's 12 inches. Doll two we know is 18 inches. So we need to compare these two. And how do we do that? We put those measurements on a number line. So here they are. The first one is 12 inches, so here's doll one. You need to uh, mark it or label, okay? So you can remember which one is which. Then, sorry, that's, oh, I felt like I had to see you, sorry guys. Um, so you need to make sure to label it after you mark it on your number line. So here's doll one and here's doll two. After you have put it on your number line, after you've placed both objects on the number line, you need to count on and then write how many, how many spaces or how many inches or how you might be measuring centimeters, but you need to write down how, what, what is the difference? How many lines on the number line are there between the first object and the second one. So I'm going to count again with you. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many? Six. Good. So down here, they already gave us um, sentences 
comparison sentences, sometimes you're going to have to write them on their own. But because they gave it, let's go ahead and just write it in. Okay, it says doll one is shorter by six inches. Doll two is longer by six inches. You notice that the number is the same because they're saying the same exact thing. They're just talking about one object in one sentence and they're talking about the other doll in the second sentence. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second one. So mainly today uh, in this exercise, you guys are just um, practicing how to how to use the number line in comparison and filling in your uh, comparison sentence. Okay, so here we go. Number two, if you notice, their number line goes up and down. They're doing this because they're comparing heights. So as if somebody, the Dylan was standing against the basketball hoop. Okay, but don't get confused because it's the same thing. If you turn your book this way, it's the same number line. Okay, if it makes it more easy for you to do your number line this way, then do that. All right. So number two says, Dylan wants to know how much shorter he is than the basketball hoop. He knows that the basketball hoop is 10 feet tall and he measures four feet tall. He wants to compare the two heights. Okay, so that was um, reading the sentence. Now we need to do step number one, which is to identify the two objects that you're comparing. Well, he wants to know, Dylan wants to know how short, how much shorter he is than the basketball hoop. So we know that we're comparing Dylan and the basketball hoop, right? So I went ahead and uh, underlined both. Then step number two says to draw my number line, and here it is. Step number three is to compare them. Remember, when we're comparing, we're taking what we know about each object and putting it on the number line. So we know that the, t the basketball hoop is 10 feet tall, so we put it over here. We put a dot on 10 and labeled it basketball hoop. Because sometimes maybe you might forget. Maybe you have to leave your book and come back. And then maybe if you didn't label it, you're going to think that um, 10 feet is Dylan. So you always have to remember to label um, your object so you don't get confused. Okay. Um, the second object is, it says right here, he, which we know is Dylan. So he measures at four feet tall. So you'll put four feet down here and Dylan. Just like the first one, you're going to count on, so starting with the smaller number, count on from 4 to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Again, it's 6. So all you need to do now is plug it into your sentences. Dylan is shorter by 6 feet. The basketball hoop is taller by 6 feet. All right, easy peasy. So I want you guys to get... Um, your stu structured guided practice done and uh, the final check for understanding done. Okay, it's going to be the same thing. So you need to identify, identify the two objects, put them on your number line, and then compare them by cu counting on and then plugging in your numbers onto the lines. All right. But also remember, we are doing we're covering lesson twelve in today's lesson. So I'm going to go ahead and skip four to lesson twelve. Um, if you want to finish lesson 11 work first, then pause this video. Um, but if you don't, then let's go ahead and continue and then you can finish everything all at once. All right. So lesson 12, the objective is the same. I will compare, um, I will compare the lengths. Actually, I'm missing a word. Compare lengths of two objects by counting on. So same thing. The steps are a little bit different because this time you have to actually measure the object. So this requires you to either have a ruler or a yardstick, something that you can measure with. But remember that if you do not have um, a measuring tool, you can use body parts, right? So if you're going to do inches, you can use your thumb from the tip of your thumb to the first um, knuckle. Okay. If you're doing centimeters, you know that you use the pinky from one side of your pinky nail to the other. A yard, remember, is um, your wingspan from fingertip to fingertip. And if you're doing a foot, it's your from your wrist to your elbow. Okay. So let's get going. Um, vocabulary words are the same, so we're dealing with counting on still. And um, we're still comparing two objects. And our steps are pretty much the same, except for uh, number one, you don't, they didn't say to identify the two objects because I think they're going to give it to you. 
All right, so here we go. Number one say, says to measure to find the difference in wingspan of the butterfly and dragonfly in inches. Okay, so they give you the two objects. You don't need to figure out what the objects are. They already give it to you. All you need to do is measure them and compare. Okay, so say I didn't have a ruler or a yardstick. I'm going to use my thumb to compare the two. Okay, so here's one. We'll start with the dragonfly. Here's one, two, three. And I'm going to just label, label to the right of the dragonfly, three inches. And I-N is how you abbreviate inches. You can also write the whole word out. Okay, then the butterfly. One, two, three, four. Four inches. Okay, now you need to set up your number line, right? After you've been, you figured out what the measurements of the two are. So I'm going to set up my number line, and none of them are bigger than 10. So I'm just going to start with zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine and ten keep in mind that a number line does not need to be spaced out evenly like your fractions because you're just using the using it as a tool to count on okay so i know that there's more space here between my zero and a one than there is here between my nine and ten but that's perfectly fine because all i'm doing is using it to count okay after i set up my number line i need to place my my objects on my number line so here we go three is my dragonfly and I'm just gonna write DF for short and then my butterfly is one inch I mean four inches so I'm gonna write butterfly BF next I need to count on so starting at the three in my smallest number four how many is that one one inch all right Last, you, last thing you need to do is fill in your blanks down here for your counting sentences, comparison sentences. So the wingspan of the, let's start with the, the dragonfly. Dragonfly is how many? Correct. One inch longer than the wingspan of the butterfly. Okay. The wingspan of the, and then... This is the second sentence. So remember in uh, the ex exercise at the beginning of the last one, they wrote the same thing, just in opposite. They, uh, did, they did opposite st statements. So doll one had a statement and doll two. So it's the same thing for this one. We have a statement for the dragonfly. Now we need to do one for the butterfly. The wingspan of the butterfly is one inch shorter than the wingspan, uh-oh, Mrs. Haywood messed up. Let me, uh, let me white it out. I missed, I needed to read it ahead of time. So the wingspan of the blank is one inch longer. So which one has the longer wingspan? Right, the butterfly. So we need to start off with the butterfly first. The wingspan of the butterfly is one inch longer than the dragonfly. And then down here, since we did the, st the statement for the butterfly, we need to just do the opposite for down here for the dragonfly. So the wingspan of the dragonfly is one inch shorter than the wingspan of the butterfly okay so we need to be making sure that we're reading the statements before we write them down it'll hopefully be easier for you because I wrote with pen so I had to white it out but with you you'll probably be writing with pencil hopefully so that'll be easier for you all right let's go to the second input model here we go a giraffe is 16 feet tall a lion is four feet tall. Which one is taller? How much taller is it? 
Okay, so here we're actually not even using our fingers or our body parts because we don't have a giraffe to measure against. Okay, so they already give us our measurements. What do we know? We know that the giraffe is 16 feet tall. Okay, the giraffe is 16 feet tall. And the lion is four feet tall. Once I know my measurements, I need to set up my number line, and here's an empty space. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this space right here. I'm going to make it a little bigger because I want it. the line is 4 feet and the giraffe is 16 feet. So I know that I maybe need to go all the way to 20 so that both numbers can be on the line. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Make sure I write my numbers in. Okay, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, here's my number line. Now I need to take my two objects and put them on my line. My line is four. Remember to label lion. And our giraffe is 16. So here's 16. I'm going to label it giraffe. Giraffe. Now I need to what? Count on. Okay, starting with the smaller number. One, every number gets one hump. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So what is the difference? Twelve feet. Now, if I learned from my mistakes the first time, I'm going to read my statements first so I know which one we're, we're going to plug in first. So the blank is blank feet taller than the blank. So which one is taller? The giraffe. So I'm going to start with the giraffe. The giraffe is how many feet? 12 feet taller than the lion. And now you know you can just do the opposite for the second statement. The lion is 12 feet shorter than the giraffe. Okay, easy peasy. All right. So now you need to go and do structure guided practice, final check, and student practice for lesson 12. Okay, to, uh, to review, for lesson 11, on page on your journal it's going to be 137 you're going to finish up your structure guided practice it looks like this structured guided practice and your final check for understanding it looks like this and then you will go to lesson 12 also finish the structure guided practice with the candy cane and the lollipop so here they want you to find the measurements by using your thumbs or your pinkies I don't think that you would use a yard or a foot for this, okay? Um, do your structure guide to practice, and it's on two pages. And then you'll do your final check for understanding and student practice, all six problems. If you have extra time, um, I would suggest you do the challenge problems um, so that we can grow your brains. All right? Get going, guys.